Hey guys, today I'll show you how to create a single post template using Neve Pro and Otter's dynamic content feature. So we are in our WordPress dashboard and we are going to be replacing this single post template with a custom one. So let's go back to our dashboard and we'll go to appearance, just hover over appearance, then click on custom layouts. Now we'll click on add new. We'll choose templates and for the type, we'll select single post. Now we can also make the name single post. And once we're done, we can click create custom layout. And this page will open up in the WordPress editor. So we can use any block to build the single post template. And I like to configure my custom layout settings first. We already have our layout set. And for conditional logic, we'll select post type is equal to posts. So this layout will only be displayed on this post type. Let's start building. I'll type in slash section to add a section block. Now we need to choose the column layout. So I'll choose the two by one. All right, that's fine. And we'll open the list view and we'll go to the section block. Now let's go to settings on the right hand side. Now we'll go to section structure and we'll change the maximum content width to 1170. Okay. Now we'll also center align the column. So we'll just fit it in the center of the page. So we'll use this column on the right to build a sidebar and we'll use the one on the left for our content. Now we'll just make sure that we set a column width of about 65% for the column on the left. We'll just replace this number with 65. All right, so we're good. We'll start by adding a post content block to the first column. So I'll type in post content in the search bar. It's the first one. And we're not going to be able to see a preview of this block inside of the editor, but that's fine. We'll work around that. Let's go to section and we'll go to style. So we just want to add some margin to the top and bottom. I think 50 pixels should be fine. Okay, let's see what all of this looks like so far. Let's click on the publish button one more time. And now we can go to our single post. We'll refresh the page to see our changes. Okay, so there's our content on the left and we need to add our sidebar right here. Let's go back to the editor to build it. You can build anything you like, but I'll build an author section. So I'll start by adding a section block inside of this column. I'll click on section and I'll choose a single column. Now I totally recommend having the list view open so you can see your structure as you go along. Now let's continue by adding an image block inside of the section column. So click on image, then media library, then dynamic images, then author image. And once you're done, click on select. All right, so here's an image of our author. So I'll click on the image and press enter. And now we have a paragraph block, which we are gonna use for our dynamic values. So I'll type in by, then the percentage symbol. I'll begin typing author and I'll click on author name. And we can also click on this down arrow to access dynamic values. If we access the data type dropdown, we'll see all of the dynamic values that we have available. So you have a choice. You can use this method or you can just type in percentage and type your dynamic value. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and add another paragraph. Let's add the author description. So we'll type in the percentage symbol. We're looking for author description. So we'll type in, well, we'll begin typing author and we'll click on author description. Now on the left, we'll click on the parent column and we're gonna add some padding inside of this. So let's go to the style tab and now we can add about 20 pixels of padding all around. We'll press enter and we'll see what it looks like. So we'll click on the section column one more time so we can see the space that it added. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is add some color to this column. So we're gonna go to background and content and we'll choose a color. So maybe we can make it purple and add some white text, or maybe we could just make it white since the page is gray. Okay, I think that should be fine. Now we can add some border radius to round the corners of this column. So let's go to border, then border radius. Let's make it 20 pixels. We'll press enter. And if we look, we'll see that the corners have been rounded. Okay, now we can update this page to see how everything looks together. Let's go and refresh our blog post. All right, so here's our content with the sidebar. It looks good, but we need to add some space between these two elements. So we'll go back and we'll select the first section column. We'll go to style on the right hand side. Let's first unlink the padding values and we'll add 50 pixels of padding to the right hand side. We'll press enter and now we can click on update. Now let's go back to our blog post to see how it looks. Let's refresh and there it is. We'll add some spacing between the name and the first paragraph. So let's go back to the editor and we'll add a spacer block anywhere in this column. So let's search for a spacer. We'll click on the first one and we'll just make this about maybe about 30 pixels. Should be fine. Yes. And we'll just place this at the top. Now we can click on update to see the result. Let's go back to our blog post. Let's refresh. And now we can see our changes. We have the author name and description. Let's add a link to the author name. So we are gonna use dynamic links to do this. All we need to do is highlight this tag 
we're just going to start at the end and go all the way up. We'll click on the down arrow and we can no longer use dynamic value. We'll choose dynamic link. Data type will be author URL. Now we'll click on apply, then update. So once we do this, we can go back to the blog post and refresh. And we now have a link to the authors page where we can see more posts. Now, keep in mind that this information will change dynamically based on the information that you are viewing. So if we were to go back to our blog and we'll scroll all the way down, we'll click on the last post, which is highest paying jobs in the UK by John Doe. We'll see John Doe's author information. If we click on John Doe's name, we'll go to John Doe's author page. So remember, you are free to design your single post template however you want. The same goes for a single page. Now, if we go back to the editor and we take a look at conditional logic, right now this is being applied to posts, but it can also be applied to pages or job openings. We can also go ahead and change the post type to post. And now we are going to select a specific post. So let's click on search and we'll select a post from this list. Maybe we can use highest paying jobs in the UK. Okay. And we'll click on update. Now we can go back to our blog. Let's refresh. We still have our custom layout, but if we go back to the blog and we go to any other post, we'll see that we have the original layout. So we only applied our custom layout to one post. All right, so now you know how to create a single post template using dynamic values and custom layouts. Thanks for watching. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.